Hello everyone. Let us see how to find the Fourier transform of a unit step function ut, defined in this way. So let us define the Fourier transform of ut as some u of omega. And if we use the conventional integration form of finding Fourier transform of any function, when we plug in ut in such a function, we would get u omega is equal to integration minus infinity to plus infinity, the function ut e to the power minus j omega t dt. Now we know that ut is undefined at t equal to 0. So if I break this integration, I can say this is 0 plus just after 0 to infinity. The value of ut just after 0 till infinity is 1 into e to the power minus j omega t dt. When I solve this, I would get minus 1 upon j omega e to the power minus j omega t limits from 0 plus to infinity. Even for an instant, if I believe that at t equal to 0, ut is almost 1 and I ignore the lower limit, the problem here is with the upper limit. Now look at this term e to the power j omega t. This term is simply cos omega t minus j sin omega t. And when we plug in the limits t tending to infinity, the value of this function as t tends to infinity, we know that this is a sinusoid, so its value will be something between minus 1 and plus 1. But what exactly will be its value as t tends to infinity? That remains unknown. As t tends to infinity, the value of e to the power minus j omega t is indeterminate. Therefore, we cannot use this approach to directly find the Fourier transform of a unit step function. When we look at the unit step function, we can clearly see that it does not satisfy Dirichlet's condition because it is not absolutely integrable from minus infinity to plus infinity. The area under unit step function is not a finite value. We already know that if this was the case, we could take the help of delta function to find the Fourier transform. So with these clues in mind, we have to take an alternative approach to find the Fourier transform of a unit step function. So instead of using this approach, if I define unit step function as a limiting case of a decaying exponential of the form e to the power minus a t u t, where a is positive. So this is e to the power minus a t u t. If I say, if I define u t as a limiting case of e to the power a t u t, such that a tends to zero, what we notice is as you go on changing the value of a and if you go on making value of a smaller, this curve is going to go closer and closer to 1 and finally it will become equal to 1. So if you define ut as a limiting case of a de decaying exponential of the form e to the power minus at ut such that a tends to 0. So finding the Fourier transform of this signal on both sides would mean that u of omega that is the Fourier transform of ut will be simply the Fourier transform of e to the power minus a t u t but with limit a tending to 0. Now I already know that the Fourier transform of e to the power minus a t u t is 1 upon a plus j omega. We have derived this in class and now we can use this as a standard result. So limit a tending to 0. If I rationalize this and split this into real and imaginary parts, so basically I am multiplying numer numerator and denominator with a minus j omega, I get limit a tending to 0, a square upon a square plus omega square minus j omega upon a square plus omega square. Now if you look at the second term, the limiting case is pretty clear. The second term as a will tend to 0, the second term is going to tend to minus j 1 upon omega because omega upon omega square when a is equal to 0. I could as well write this as 1 upon j omega. The second term will become 1 upon j omega. But this first term a square upon a square plus omega square with limit a tending to 0 has a couple of very interesting properties. Let me define this function 
as for the time being as some g of omega. So what I notice is the first interesting property is that as a tends to 0, this function g omega tends to 0 only if omega is not equal to 0. Because if a was also 0 and omega was also 0, this term becomes of 0 by 0 form which is indeterminate. So we can say a tends to, as a tends to 0, g omega tends to 0 if omega is not equal to 0. The second interesting property is if you observe the area under g omega. Okay. If you observe the area under g omega from minus infinity to plus infinity, this is simply tan inverse of omega by a limit from minus infinity to plus infinity and this is equal to pi irrespective of the value of a. That means such a function has an area under it equal to pi irrespective of whatever was the value of a. Now knowing both these properties that as a will tend to 0, the functional value will tend to 0 only if omega is not equal to 0. But the area under this function is equal to pi irrespective of whatever is the value of a. So this gives us two clues. One, that the function value is 0 wherever omega is not equal to 0 from the first point. And secondly, even if a was tending to 0, the area under the curve does not change. It is pi. This tells us that as a tends to 0, this function g omega or a upon a square plus omega square clearly approaches an impulse having an area of pi. That means having a strength of pi. So this term, limit a tending to 0, a square upon a square plus omega square can be written as pi delta omega. Because this value, the area under this curve is always constant which is pi and this value is not defined for omega equal to 0 and for all other values of omega which are not equal to 0, the value of this function is 0. This is what these two properties told us. That means that if I now simplify and write the Fourier transform of a unit step function, it becomes pi delta omega plus 1 upon j omega. So to summarize, the Fourier transform of a unit step function ut is pi delta omega plus 1 upon j omega. Delta omega is a unit impulse function in the frequency domain. Now you can use this relationship, this Fourier transform pair as a standard result to solve various numerical problems in your assignments.